the news from ITN. Gorbachev, the last president of the Soviet Union, resigns. The red flag of communism is lowered over the Kremlin. Yeltsin takes control of 30,000 Soviet nuclear weapons. And world leaders pay tribute to Gorbachev's achievements. Good evening. The red flag came down over the Kremlin tonight as President Gorbachev resigned and brought to an end seven decades of communist rule in the Soviet Union. Right to the last, Mr. Gorbachev said he was unhappy at the breakup of the country, but he pledged to do everything he could for the new Commonwealth of Independent Republics. The Russian president, Boris Yeltsin, now has his finger on the nuclear button. We have two reports from Moscow on the final hours of the Soviet Union. As Mikhail Gorbachev resigned, the Soviet and Russian flags still fluttered side by side above the Kremlin. But Mr. Gorbachev finally brought the curtain down on the Soviet Union and his own extraordinary career. Compatriots, due to the situation which has evolved as a result of the formation of the Commonwealth of Independent States, I hereby discontinue my activities at the post of President of the USSR. The manner of his departure reflected the nature of his rule. The Kremlin, so long the forbidden city of the Soviet Empire, opened its doors to the world. Mr. Gorbachev quit live on satellite TV. This society has acquired freedom. It has been freed politically and spiritually and this is the most important achievement that we have yet to fully come to grips with and we haven't because we haven't learned to use freedom yet later in an interview with cnn mr gorbachev showed documents which formally hand control of the nuclear arsenal to boris yeltsin he was now stripped of all power we are cooperating i think in the interest of our states, in the interests of the Commonwealth, in the interests of the world. Mikhail Gorbachev inherited an empire maintained by the iron fist of central control. He's leaving behind 15 independent states which share only a disastrous economy and an uncertain future. Tonight, the Kremlin's red flag was lowered for the last time. People in this country, said Mr. Gorbachev, are ceasing to become citizens of a great power. Tim at ITN, Moscow. Out with the old, in with the new. Russia's trickler tonight replacing the red flag over the Kremlin. A country renamed and reborn and now in the hands of Boris Yeltsin. The Russian president has today received control of the former Soviet nuclear arsenal. He reassured the West that he'd strive to prevent it ever being used. The nuclear weapons are going to be controlled by just one person, and I don't want the international community to be worried about it. Mr. Yeltsin today predicted grave economic difficulties for the coming year, but said he was confident the new Commonwealth would ultimately succeed. The people here are weary of pessimism, and the share of pessimism is too much for the people to handle. Now they need some belief. It's been Yeltsin's boldness that's rewarded him with an independent Russia to rule. Most recently in August when he led resistance during the attempted coup and most sensationally last year when he walked out of the Communist Party Congress and handed in his party card. He is, like Mikhail Gorbachev, a product of the Communist Party structures, rising swiftly through its ranks as a young man. But this risk-taker distanced himself from the party and sided with the people before it was too late, emerging as the only opposition leader of stature. Concerns remain about the health of this 60-year-old maverick. He's reported to suffer from a heart complaint. Concerned, too, about his sometimes unstatesmanlike image abroad, internationally, Mikhail Gorbachev is a very hard act to follow. But most concern lies over the ability of just one man to inspire hope. Hope from a people who feel that for so long they've been cruelly mistreated by their leaders. To succeed, he must rescue the economy fast. It's that that will decide the future of Boris Yeltsin and of Russia. Penny Marshall, ITN, Moscow.